In 1982, Ozzy Osbourne bit off the head of a bat on stage. But compared to the man we're gonna talk about today, Ozzy is a wussy. I'm sorry, Ozzy. The man we're gonna talk about today is crazy. Like, this is the craziest artist I've ever read about. He is so crazy that I can't really talk about his entire career because it flies directly into the face of a lot of YouTube policies. Okay, buckle up. Born Jesus Christ Allen. That's right, his name was Jesus Christ. Allen. Why was he called Jesus Christ? Well, his father claimed that he was visited by Jesus and told him that his son would be a man in vain of the Messiah himself. Which, as you will find out, is horribly wrong or we're missing some spicy scriptures from Jesus' party days. Anyway, uh, Jesus Christ Allen also had a little brother, but he couldn't really pronounce his older brother's name, so he started calling him Gigi, which was short for Jesus Christ, uh, which made his full name Gigi Allen. And Gigi Allen had a rough childhood. And when I say rough, I mean rough. According to him and his little brother, he grew up in a shed with no heat, no running water, he was constantly beaten as a kid by his father and his father would even dig up graves in the cellar threatening to fill them with their bodies if they didn't listen. It, 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 <laughs> it's fucking shocking to be honest. It didn't matter to Gigi though because according to him it made him a warrior soul at a young age. His words, not mine. But see that made me sort of a warrior soul at an early age. So around this time is where Gigi Allen became the artist Gigi Allen. Gigi Allen was in a lot of bands. Of punk rock bands including names like The Jabbers, The Scumfucks, The Holy Men, The Texas Nazis, The AIDS Brigade, and finally settling on The Murder Junkies. Now the reason that Gigi was in so many bands wasn't because they kept changing their name from some marketing perspective, but because his bands always kicked him out. They couldn't really deal with his onstage antics and warrior soul. And I'm gonna quote the man himself here because I don't want to misinterpret his artistic vision. <clears throat> My rock and roll is not to entertain, but to annihilate. I'm trying to bring the danger back into rock and roll and there are no limits, no laws, and I'll break down every barrier put in front of me until the day that I die. If you come to my show, you are going to a war. My mind's the machine gun, my body is the bullets, and the audience is the target. It is not a performance, it is a ritual. My body is a rock and roll temple, and bodily fluids are a communion to the people, whether they like it or not. The defecation is the communion to the audience. It's a communion to my allies. So let me try to paint a picture while we listen to his famous hit, Bite It, You Scum. Hit it. Gigi liked to perform naked, baby buck naked, except for a spiked collar around his neck. He kinda looked like a baby throwing a temper tantrum. And this naked temper tantrum throwing baby often jumped into the crowds. Not for a stage dive, but to start fist fights with his audience members. To just jump into a crowd and start throwing. One of his moves was to defecate on stage. Now this was shocking at first, but at some point his audience kind of was like, eh, GG, we've seen this before, man, stop shitting on stage. So he was like, okay, I'm gonna shit on stage, but then I'm gonna grab it and smear it all over myself, and then again, jump into the crowd to start fist fights with his audience members. They put me in the hospital, I've been beaten up, I beat them up. It's not just a one-sided thing. Now I didn't even talk about the fact that he used glass bottles to hit himself over the head, uh, cutting himself everywhere. And his shows always either ended in him getting his ass beat or the police arrested him. Obviously. 
Why should I get arrested? Why shouldn't they get arrested? And also, he often landed in the hospital because cutting yourself open and then smearing poop all over your body is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. Of course, you're gonna get infections. Basically, going to a Gigi Allen show was going to a freak show where you didn't know what would happen. People wanna see it! You can watch some of these shows online, and there is even a documentary about him called Hated Gigi Allen and the Murder Junkies. Which, funnily enough, is made by the same director who also made The Joker and The Hangover. Uh, humble beginnings, I guess. Gigi also had an idea of how he wanted to end his career. He wanted to end his career and his life live on stage during one of these shows. Which also is why a lot of fans actually went to his shows, kind of hoping slash not hoping to see the end of his career. He announced it multiple times, but uh, every time that the date finally arrived where he said he would do it, he was in prison and he couldn't perform, so he never really did it. And he never really got to do it because in 1993, Gigi Allen overdosed during an after party. This wasn't the end of his rock and roll mindset yet, though, because Gigi Allen also had an idea of how he wanted to, you know, be buried. So, abiding by Gigi's own last wishes, uh, his body wasn't preserved during the funeral and he was dressed in a black leather jacket with a jock strap and laying next to him was a bottle of Jim Beam. His friends put the drugs and whiskey over his body during the funeral and the funeral turned more into a big party and when the party was over his brother put a headphone over Gigi's head with a cassette playing a copy of The Suicide Sessions. Now because Gigi had this fuck you mentality, his grave was often defiled by his fans or haters. I mean, everybody kind of treated him the same as a degenerate. But his tombstone had to be removed because everybody was just trashing his grave. Which is kind of the end of the full story of what I believe to be the most crazy messed up artist slash musician that I've ever heard about. I want to stress again, I had to cut out a lot of content because I just didn't think it was appropriate to really discuss it. Uh, but if you dig into the story yourself, you'll find that it's even crazier than what I'm telling you. So if you like stories like that, yeah, be my guest. Oh, and by the way, Ozzy Osbourne only bit off the head of that bat because he thought it was fake. So there's no way that counts, Ozzy, okay? It doesn't count, bro. And as the outro, let me just go with the classic, you know, leave a like, subscribe if you enjoyed. I'm gonna post two more videos here so you can just, you know, keep clicking and watching my shit. And I guess I'll see you in the next video.